Hi, this is Year 12 Pure, Chapter 10, Lesson 4, and today we're going to be solving simple trigonometric equations. To be able to access this lesson, you need to be able to do the following things. You need to be able to cast appropriately or use waves, preferably cast, and you also need to know that tan of x is equal to sine of x over cos of x, and you also need to know that sine squared x plus cos squared x is equal to 1. If you can do those things, you should be pretty comfortable. Make sure you've got a calculator with you, because otherwise this is impossible to do. So, let's get cracking. So, we've got solve cos of theta equals one half for theta between zero and 360 degrees now you'll have seen this before at gcse or even earlier where you've got an angle theta and you'll have an adjacent side of one and a hypotenuse which is two and so you'll have known that cos of theta equals one over two and you know to find the angle you move your cos over and use your inverse cos okay so to solve this, you're going to use an inverse cos. Whenever you've got cos in your variable and it's just one chunk with cos in your variable, use inverse. Okay, Use the inverse. Move it over and use the inverse. So if we've got cos of theta equals 1 half, then theta will equal cos inverse, or the inverse of cos of 1 half. And so therefore theta will equal, well, pop that into your calculator and to use the inverse cos, tap shift cos 0 0.5 is equal to 60 so theta is equal to 60 degrees <clears throat> now we can cast this 60 degrees is here cos is positive in this quadrant we know it's positive in this quadrant because cos 60 is positive a half in the, another quadrant where cos is positive is this one Make the angle between the horizontal axis and the line, which is 60. And so x uh, theta will equal 60 and theta will equal all the way around to here, which probably most people would just do 360 take away 60, which is 300 degrees. So theta equals 60 degrees and 300 degrees. And when you're dealing with trig, you must always cast just to double check whether you've got any extra solutions other than the one that you've got. Okay, now just before we move on, have a think about this. If we've got cos of inverse cos of smiley face, what would we get? That's right, smiley face. Okay, when you apply a function to its own inverse, you get back to whatever you plugged in originally. All right, so those two things cancel each other out, and that's why this works up here. All right, moving on. We've got 6 tan of x plus 1 equals 2. Find all solutions for x where x is between 0 and 360 degrees. Now, important, this is not the same as 6 tan of, open brackets, x plus 1, close brackets, equals 2. If I wanted that, I would have put brackets around. But here, adding has got to happen way after I apply tan. Okay, I'll take x, I'll apply tan to it, I'll multiply by 6, and then I'll add 1, and I'll get 2. These two things are not the same as each other. This is not the same. Okay. If I wanted it to be, then I would have put it that way. So, given that 6 tan x plus 1 equals 2, find all solutions. What you must do is try to get tan of x to be the subject. So, we're going to have 6 tan of x is going to equal 2 take away 1, which is 1. Which means that tan of x is going to equal 6 make the th make the um make the trig and the variable the subject and then from there you can then make the variable the subject so we've got um oops that should be one sixth pardon me we've got inverse tan of one sixth okay so not too bad pretty easy especially if you don't mess it up like i just did all right now apply inverse tan to one sixth and you'll end up with 9.46. So x is equal to 9.46 degrees. And we need to cast this to try to find out where else does that happen. So we've got 9.46 degrees C, A, S, and T. Now we're in the quadrant where tan is positive. The other quadrant where tan is positive is this one. Make the angle between the horizontal again, 9.46 degrees. And so you'll have 9.46 and you'll also have 180 plus 
which is going to be x is equal to 9.46 and 189.46 degrees degrees job done okay moving on we've got given that 2 sine x equals root 3 cos of x find all values of x now this here looks a bit scary because you've got multiple like you've got sine and you've got cos you've got different trig ratios and you might try to use inverse sine you might try and apply inverse sine over here and apply inverse sine over here but as soon as you apply inverse sine to cos you're going to end up in a right mess the way to deal with this is to use this identity that tan of x is equal to sine of x over cos of x we're going to try to apply that in here so where we have 2 sine x equals root 3 lots of cos x I'm going to divide the cos x and I'm going to divide the 2. I'm going to move the cos x under and move the 2 under. And I'll end up with sine of x over cos of x is equal to root 3 over 2. Which means that tan of x equals root 3 over 2. Don't panic if you get something that's top heavy here. I know you'll be thinking maybe every so often you'll spot the inverse sign applied to something that's over one just doesn't work or less than negative one doesn't work but with tan it's absolutely fine in this case though it's not top heavy so there's nothing to worry about so x will equal tan to the negative one with the inverse of tan over root three over two all right so we get inverse tan of root three make sure you tap across when you put your root three after you put your three if you don't tap across you'll end up with root of 3 divided by 2, so root of 1.5, which is no good. So make sure you're really careful with popping roots into your calculator or use the fraction button. And you'll find out that x is equal to 40.89 degrees. So we're going to cast 40.89 C, A, S, and T. Now we use tan. Where else is tan positive? It's there. So we've got 40.89 added to 180 will be 220.89 degrees okay nothing too scary but it gives you a chance to use one of the identities that you should know how to use already all right here's a past paper question this is a genuine past paper question um, from a few years ago so this was this was back before the new spec of the a level i'd suggest pausing the video give it a crack and then we'll go through it so let's see if you manage to get what i got so we've got sine of theta equals 5 cos of theta, which means that sine of theta over cos of theta is equal to 5, which means that tan theta equals 5. All right, there we go. That's it. Tan theta equals 5. There's one mark. Lovely. Now, hence or otherwise, whenever a question asks you hence or otherwise, try to use the hence if possible. So using the information that you've just got, Find the values of theta uh, for which those two things are equal, giving your answers to one decimal place. In other words, solve the equation that you've just formed and give your answer to one decimal place. There's a hint here as well. Give your answers. All right. So we know that we're going to need to give um, multiple answers. And obviously we know that there's likely to be two solutions here anyway. So we'll get tan of theta equals 5. And so theta will equal to tan negative 1, the inverse of tan of 5, so theta will equal, so we'll apply inverse tan to 5, and we'll get 78.69, or 78.7 to one decimal place. We need to find the other region where that happens, so we've got cast 78.7 is here, that's where everything's positive, we need the other position where tan is positive, which is here. So we'll have another 78.7. So that's going to be 180 plus 78.7, which will be 258.7 degrees. All right, hopefully you got the same as I did. Let's move on. Next up, find all solutions for x, given that we've got 6 sine squared x plus 2 cos squared x equals 5. Now this is a bit of a pig when you've got these questions and you know that you're going to be using sine squared plus cos squared um, equals 1 but there's a bit going on here that maybe people don't always spot. So what we're going to do first is we're going to try to produce 2 sine squared x's out of this so that we can tidy up 
here. Really, I don't want to have any cos squared x's. I want to have lots of sine squared x's. I could try to have lots of cos squared x's or no sine squared x's, but really, because there's more of these, I'm going to try to keep as many as I can. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite it as 4 sine squared x plus 2 sine squared x plus 2 cos squared x is going to equal 1. Uh, equal 5, pardon me. Now that'll be 4 sine squared x plus 2 lots of sine squared x plus cos squared x, which is equal to 5. Now this chunk here is equal to 1, isn't it? So we'll get 4 sine squared x plus 2 is equal to 5. And so 4 sine squared x is going to equal to 3. And so sine squared x is going to equal 3 quarters. Now, be really careful here. This is the bit you want to be really, 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 really careful about. This is important. When we root this, we're going to get two cases. We're going to get, get the case where we've got positive of root 3 quarters. And we're going to get the case where we've got negative of root 3 quarters. Okay, So sine of x is going to equal plus or minus root 3 quarters. Now, as soon as this happens, we're going to need to take the two different cases because we're going to have case one where we've got the plus and case two where we've got the negative. So let's take a look at case one. Sine of x is equal to root three quarters, which means that x is equal to sine to the negative one or inverse sine of root three quarters, which means that x will have some value that we can find pretty easily. So let's try and find out what that is. Use sine to negative 1 of root, use your fraction button if you want, um, of 3 quarters, and you'll end up with 60. Okay, there's 60. Not too bad. Now, C, A, S, and T, so we need to cast. We use sine to negative 1, this is where sine is positive, we've got 60 there. So we want another 60 there, which means we've got 180 to take away 60, which is 120. Okay, so that's case one. In case two, we've got sine of x equals negative root three quarters. Now that means that x will equal inverse sine of negative root uh, negative root three quarters. Okay, and so let's take a look at what that looks like. You'll get inverse sine of negative of root three quarters, which comes out as negative 60. Now, negative 60, x equals negative 60, is a problem because negative 60 is there, but that's outside of this domain for x. Now, negative 60 is back there. But we can still cast. Now sine is negative in this region. We need the other one where sine is negative, which is this one. And still pop our 60 in there. And then we can cast from there. We've got 0, 90, 180. Oh, we can have that one. Which is 240. And we can have that one, which equals 300. We must not write this. It's outside of the domain that we want. Okay, and so x will have four values here is 60, 120, 240, and 300 degrees, 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 and degrees. Okay. Okay, here's an exam question. It's not identical to the exam question. It's an old C2 paper question. It's worth six marks. It was actually, um, it used something called radiance, which you'll learn about in year 13, but it's got it's got no more, it's not, not much more difficult than using degrees. So I'd suggest pausing the video and giving a crack it out. So in this case we've got cos squared and we've got sine. Now you cannot do very much with sine. You can't do much with it okay, unless you've got a cos that you can divide it by and turn it into a tan for whatever reason. You can't do much with it. So what we're going to do is we're going to try to turn this into sines if possible. So we'll have two lots of 1 subtract sine squared x plus 1 is going to equal 5 sine x. True story. Okay, cos squared is equal to 1 minus sine squared. We want to try to have the same trig ratio throughout. 
we're going to have cosses or sines or just tans. In this case, we've got sines. A bit of expansion and a bit of tidying up, and we're going to get 2 minus 2 sine squared x plus 1 is equal to 5 sine x. And we're going to have 0 is equal to 2 sine squared x plus 5 sine x minus 3. Now have a think, why have I moved things over to the right hand side? And the reason I've done that is because I just don't like having a negative version here, I like having a positive if possible. Now we're going to need to try to deal with this. It equals 0. We've got something that looks a bit like a quadratic, so we're going to have to factorise. So I'm looking for two numbers that will times to make negative 6 and add to make 5. Don't worry about the fact that this is sine, uh, sine x instead of just x. It doesn't really behave much differently. I need two numbers that will do that. Those numbers are 6 and minus 1. So we know that we've got 0 being equal to 2 sine squared x plus 6 sine x minus sine x minus 3. We factorise each side so we get 2 sine x lots of sine x plus 3 and we'll force the bracket here so we get sine x plus 3 and so this must be negative 1 for 0 and so our answer our, our brackets will be 2 sine of x minus 1 lots of sine of x plus 3 equals 0 and so in this case we've got two cases the cases are the solutions where this equals 0 and the solutions where this equals 0 so case 1 2, uh, uh, 2 sine of x minus 1 equals 0 which means that sine of x is equal to 1 half means that x is equal to inverse sine of one half. Now let's find out what that is. Inverse sine of one half is 30. Okay, so we've got 30. And we cast C, A, S, and T. The other position where sine is also positive is there. And so we find out that x equals 30 and 150 because it's 30 less than 180. Case 2, you have sine of x plus 3 equals 0. So that means sine of x equals negative 3. You can try putting that into the calculator if you want to, but what you'll get is an error. The sine wave goes like this, okay, and it carries on after that. But its maximum's at 1 and its minimum's at negative 1. Sine of anything cannot be negative 3. Sine of something could be positive up to 1 or negative down to negative 1. It could be 0, it could be 1, it could be negative 1, but it couldn't be anything outside of that. It can't even be 1.00001. It's not possible. Okay, and so what you will write here is no solutions generated. That'll do. And so you make sure that you put your answers really clearly. X equals 30 and X equals 150 degrees. All right. Hopefully that helped. Thanks very much for watching. Good luck.